Good morning, I'm Peter Harrison and here today's Thought for the Day. In the early 1980s, two unrelated events were both attributed to God showing his anger by some churchgoers. They suggested that we should take these as a warning. The first was the fire in York Minster, blamed on the appointment of the Reverend David Jenkins as Bishop of Durham. Most of the criticism he attracted was due to the misunderstanding of his argument, deliberate or otherwise. In fact, he was a fairly orthodox theologian who was appallingly seduced by some of the press because of the political stance he took as a result of his Christian beliefs. The second was the AIDS epidemic, that at first seemed to be a disease originating in and restricted to gay men, and then spread by more generalised promiscuity. There may well be some people who still hold such views, but they're rarely expressed anymore. I was reminded of these two events by something akin to the dog that didn't bark in the night in Conan Doyle's book, The Hound of the Baskervilles. I had not heard of anyone saying the Covid pandemic has been willed by God, and on attempting to confirm this by an online search, has proved to be wrong. But it's only a small number of people in America who are making such a claim, while a larger but still quite small number of Christian leaders are recorded as specifically denying this. I can only conclude that as this virus seemed totally undiscerning and will attack anybody, regardless of class, affluence or race, that it does not easily provide an individual or group that can be cast on the role of scapegoat, although that has not stopped some seeking to blame the Chinese. It would be unchristian at least, if not downright perverted, to suggest that anyone has deserved to die from this infection. The concept of physical afflictions being punishment from God as a result of sin committed by a person, their parents or ancestors was still prevalent at the time of Jesus, as indicated by Jesus' disciples asking him whose transgression had caused the blindness in the man to whom he was about to give sight. This is not surprising, and God is said frequently in the Hebrew Bible, our Old Testament, to threaten such action. The book of Job put forward a strong counter-argument to such understanding. There are those who take this story as a factual history, but a large number of studies suggest that it was written specifically as a philosophical and a theological examination of why evil happens to good people. Job, a prosperous family man who loves and worships God, is afflicted by a series of horrible illnesses and financial catastrophes, but despite all the entreaties of his four friends, or comforters as they have been known, refuses to blame or curse God, although not surprisingly he wonders why he's been so damaged. At the end of the book, God challenges Job at beginning, Have you an arm like God? And can you thunder with a voice like this? And goes on to ask questions that point out the difference between men and their creator. After this, Job realises he has uttered what he does not understand, things too wonderful that he did not know. He says he will listen to God and, despising himself, will repent in dust and ashes. In what some claim is a later edition, in the last verses all Job had done before was restored to him because of his now expressed compliance with the will of God. This extremely brief pricey emits a vast amount of subtle nuance that deserves more attention than can be expressed here. The writer of Job surely indicates the foolishness of arrogantly thinking we can control the world, even if it is our intention to assist in the distributive justice of God. This is a message we seem to have forgotten until the appearance of Covid. 
This virus is lethal, but it's not a thinking killer. It may be simply the result of a spontaneous mutation, or may prove to be another example of our unwise and dangerous farming and marketing practices. Whatever the results of research, surely to God and for the rest of humanity, it behoves us to develop some humility, give up the cult of individualism and seek cooperation in the world.